Hello, and welcome to Blythe Road Business News. For this edition, I'm joined by Graham Clark, who is Chief Executive of Emerson. Emerson is developing a potash project in Morocco. Graham, welcome on the programme. Um, you've just announced that your uh, environmental and social impact assessment, the ESIA, uh, has been referred to a national committee. We're going to come back to that later. Um, and I know that there are issues in there around the disposal of water. I want to come back to that later. But the first question is, you put the announcement out that you've been pushed up from the regional to the national uh, committee. Has the market responded fairly to this decision? Well, uh, we knew that that when we, you know, when people read that the uh, the decision hadn't been taken at the regional level um, after a very long and, and iterative process, people wouldn't wouldn't take that well. We, we knew that would be the case. Um, it was something that as soon as we got clarity on that being the position, um, and that wasn't as straightforward as you might imagine, we actually made sure that we put that information out as soon as we could. Um, I, I think the the response has been probably more at a sort of binary level that it's been taken that this is you know potentially the end of the line. Well, that, that's not the case. It is part of the process. And although we would much rather they had been able to to approve it's now sat with the with a national committee, uh, which is chaired by the prime minister and, and attended by ministers, and we've we've given the project a high profile. You know, it is nationally significant, and maybe it was always inevitable that that it would the decision would be taken at a, a higher level ultimately. Almost inevitable, you say. I mean, you know, hindsight is a wonderful thing. With the benefit of hindsight, would you have liked to disclose more detail on the process to the market? As you were going through that process well i you know we've it's it has been you know quite a a long and, and at times quite complicated process um we've been involved in in fairly sensitive discussions negotiations you mentioned water and um, we'll come back to that water is obviously a very sensitive issue in morocco we've had a two or three years of drought um so it, it it's been taken very seriously you know, we've been discussing issues and it's it's not been we, we didn't deem it appropriate to to give regular updates when, you know, we're in the middle of sensitive discussions with the authorities. We didn't want to jeopardize the actual process uh, by putting out, you know, interim positions that that may or may not uh, cause us problems. And the same goes for timelines, really. They you know, there was there was no absolutely fixed timeline. So very difficult to put out speculative timelines. Uh, we made the mistake, you know, in the past that we actually suggested we were we were close, and and it's taken more time than we anticipated. So, you know, whilst the you know the market does want information, we believe we've put out the updates that we've been able to, usually as part of our quarterly updates, where we've all also updated on the other work that the company's been engaged with. Yeah. The, the process now sits with the with the national committee. Um, was there any reason why you didn't go straight to them in order to get the permit? Well, it, simply because we couldn't. The the rules, you know, the law sort of that dictates this this process in Morocco uh, says that we have to go to the regional level first. So, whilst you know, given the nature of the project, size of the project, as I've said, it, it's possibly more appropriate that it should be at a national level. We had to go through through the process as you know as it's set up, and it's it's certainly not our position to sort of doubt the process or change it or believe we know better than than Morocco does with regard to this. So so we followed the process as, you know, as it's laid out. Yeah, you, we've mentioned a couple of times now that water, uh, the disposal of water, I guess, is, is central to the consideration around the ESIA. Just give the viewers some background on, on why it's so significant for Morocco at the moment. Well, there's, as, as I mentioned, there's been a couple of years of, of drought, much lower rainfall than uh, usual. And Morocco has a huge agricultural industry that is, a, you know, one of the, uh, the main parts of the economy. And also, obviously, drinking water, you know, that, you know, any country in the world, if there are water shortages, we experience it here, you know, ridiculously enough that we end up, you know, with shortages of water in the summer in, in the UK, even with the rain that we have. So... It is a very sensitive issue and rightly, you know, the authorities have taken it very seriously and all aspects of the project that could impact either on the fresh water supply, 
or we were actually drawing water from the water supply for the for processed water, you know, has been has been scrutinized very carefully and 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 rightly so. But what we've done is we've come up with a couple of you know significant improvements which we've we've announced previously. So to minimize any risk to the water supply, the uh, the salt tailings facility is now a dry stack. So it's basically a dry pile of salt which will crystallize and be solid. And there's no chance of that um, finding its way into the water courses and, and causing any um, contamination. And for the water supply for the process water, we've actually changed that and we're now going to use wastewater from a, a waste treatment facility in Chemiset and not draw any any water from any of the water supplies for the process. So significant improvements which have been have been well received. Um, looking to the future, um, how long might the approval process take uh, from the, from now? Well, we we know that you know the national committees they they meet regularly, although there's no set dates for that. We know that we will be on the agenda of the next one. Now, that may well be before the summer break or or after the summer break. So we just need to remain patient and trust that now it, it is in the in the right hands for people to make the right decision. Well, thanks for that, Graham. I suppose that now brings me to. The big question, are you still confident you're going to get this permit? Yes, definitely. And whilst we would have been happier for the decision to have been made at the at the regional committee, we now we know it's in the right place at the national level. Everybody understands the significance of the project and, and we believe the outcome will be will be positive. Morocco is has got a new investment charter which is being driven by by the king, who is development plan for the country, that's to bring in investment into the country. Morocco is already a, a global fertilizer hub. They want to expand that and become the fertilizer supplier for Africa, help de develop agriculture in Africa. And, you know, we fit firmly in inside of that. And alongside that, the growing uh, closeness of the UK-Morocco relations based on trade and, and interactions on other uh, global matters, you know, we're, we're firmly in everybody's minds. So, yes, absolutely confident that, that we will get this approval. Well, Graham, thanks for that. Uh, you must come back and keep us updated. That was Graham Clark, Chief Executive of Emerson, talking us through the permitting process currently ongoing in Morocco for Emerson. Uh, that's it for this edition of Blythe Ray Business News. Thanks for watching.